Welcome back to Jersey Matters. The most inspirational of stories are those of families that go through an unthinkable tragedy and are able to take that tragedy and help others. Mike and Janet Honig are such people, and Gianna is here as well. They're founders of Be Like Jake. Their seven-year-old son died of brain cancer, and medical marijuana was able to help him in his battle near the end, and they want to make certain that other families have access to medical marijuana. Did I phrase that properly? Absolutely. So where is the, where is the battle right now? So the bill sits in the Senate. Uh, fortunately, we had a unanimous decision to move forward through the Assembly. Um, and now, like, like I mentioned, it's, it's in the Senate, and we're hoping to get approval sometimes, sometime towards late summer, early fall, and increase the amount that patients like Jake can have in terms of medical marijuana. And let's talk about Jake for a second. Medical marijuana, did it help him? Oh, dramatically. Um, he went from not eating to eating, having midnight snacks every night. Um, Chick-fil-A, dipping his waffle fries in his Wendy's Frosty. He, had, he was able to play with his sister um, with the medical marijuana that, he, that we administered to him. And without the medical marijuana, what was it like? It was a drastic difference. So he would be off of the medical marijuana and he'd be on the so-called best medication that medicine has to offer, such as you know, opioids and things of that nature. Um, he, he would become a different person he would take a sip of water and vomit. He would be nauseous. He couldn't eat. And it, it's hard to imagine unless you've actually experienced it and seen it, but like magic, he would take his medical marijuana and within 20 minutes he was playing, he was laughing, he'd spent quality time with us and, and his sister. Um, and he actually is one of the few people I would imagine, I don't know the statistic, but passed away from cancer gaining weight. And he did so, you're, you're convinced it was because of medical marijuana? Absolutely, because we would take him off the marijuana when we would run low, and that's really what we're trying to fight for other patients. all the effects you talked about, yeah. Yeah, because um, right now you can only get two ounces in the state if you're a patient on medical marijuana, and two ounces was just not enough for him. So when we would run low, we'd have to use it sparingly and, and incorporate other medications. And what those other medications would do was change his personality, they were not nearly as efficacious. He'd be vomiting. Um, he didn't want to play. And then we'd give him his dose of, of medical marijuana. And like we mentioned, he was eating, playing, laughing. It allowed us to spend quality time with him through his final weeks and months. But also for him, it allowed him to be happy and um, you know, experience the life that he had remaining. For those who are uneducated on the topic, I think what they get concerned about is we don't want to give a child marijuana. That, that's where they're at. But that's not what it, it really is. Could you explain what the process is? Um, we actually had to uh, make the oil at, our, at home. We would purchase the buds from the dispensary and um, make the oil in our home and administer it. Um, it would make an oil, administer it to his gums so he wouldn't get that high. And um, we would do that to him um, a couple times a day. and. Um, yeah, so he wouldn't get that high, basically. That yeah, a lot I, of people don't understand, you know. So what you just mentioned, some people say, I, you know, I could never give my child marijuana. And we always say we envy those families. Because a person, a family that can say they'd never give their child marijuana is a family that's never been put in a situation where they had to try. So it's easy to sit back and say that. But like Janet mentioned, people think automatically marijuana, it's synonymous with getting a high. That's not what this is about. This is like treating symptoms. It's about improving quality of life. And the people who say that have never been in the situation you were in, because had they been in that situation, they would do anything, anything, to make it easier for their child. Correct, and had they been in the situation, they would learn like we did, that there's ways to administer marijuana that alleviate the high. Mm -hmm. So like Janet mentioned, tacking it to the inner portion of his gum line, it does not pass through the liver, therefore he doesn't get high. Give him uh, suppositories does not pass through the liver, therefore he doesn't get high. So although you're administering THC, and although it is medical marijuana, there are ways to administer it to adults and children that they don't feel a high. I, I noticed, and maybe I misread, but I noticed as I was talking, you started to get even a little emotional now. Does, this, does the fight in doing something positive, is that also help you? Oh, absolutely. If we can help families, um, if we could help families that have, are going through what we had to go through, that makes 
makes me feel better. Us feel, feel better as a family. Have you talked to those families? Yeah, we we actually we talked to quite a few families that have gone through this and also has helped their child or even adults. Is it stuck in the Senate? I mean, I'm not sure why you don't get the unanimous support in the Senate too for something like this. Yeah, you know, you you would think, and and we would hope that we we live in a world where this should seem very easy, right? I mean, patients deserve the medication that's going to make them feel better. Why don't we just flick that button and, and make it happen? But um, it's not just Jake Honig's law that's being looked at in the Senate right now. There's other improvements to the medical marijuana program that lead legislative approval. Uh, so they're trying to wrap that all up into one bill. And believe it or not, although it's been six months since we've been working on this, um, if we can get approval in some time of uh, late summer, early fall, that would be actually pretty quick in in the state to have a, oh, such a massive change, as, as you know. Can, can be years and can yeah. never happen. Right. So, so the fact, that, and, and, and I will promise you that it's Jake, his spirit, and your testimony that is pushing this through this quickly. Huh. Does it end here, or do you go to other states? Uh -huh. Didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> We, 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 you know, we hope that the patients here in this state can, can benefit from what everybody's learned from Jake. Um, you, you know, you ask the question, does this, does this help us? It, Jake passed away six months ago. Um, in, in six months, we've had the uh, governor, Phil Murphy, sign an executive order that has uh, expanded access to thousands and thousands of patients now can utilize medical marijuana that, that didn't have it in the past. In six months, Jake, um, the day after he passed away, he donated his full brain and his full spine to research. His tumors are now at Children's Hospital Philadelphia, along with 12 other institutions worldwide, being studied so scientists and researchers can come up with a better treatment plan so kids can uh, have a better outcome than Jake had. That, that We've also cool. raised over $81,000 um, for medical research um, to help support that uh, research project specifically. Prior to 2016, uh, this tumor didn't even exist. So Jake is the third child to be in um, the medical literature uh, with this type of tumor. So this is all brand new information. Jake made the ultimate sacrifice. Um, unfortunately, it, it took his life, but he immediately got to work and he donated his brain and spine. And so we have kind of the two, two prong approach where we're all for m modern medicine. And that's why we're doing everything we can with um, his oncologist and brain surgeon at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia from that standpoint, but also then the medical marijuana side, because sometimes the medical side of things don't work out, but that doesn't mean that your quality of life has to be diminished. No, there's no better way of, uh, congratulations on what you've done, and there's no way, yeah. better way to remember and to memorialize Jake's spirit than doing exactly what you're doing now. And I would encourage you, because now you've gone through this process, you know what the political side of this is, and your story is so strong, I would encourage you, once you get the job done here, I'm sure that there's families that would appreciate you in other states as well. So Absolutely. you might want to start going out to Pennsylvania, <laughs> New York, and Delaware, and, and make the same argument. Thank you so much. Thank Gianna, you. I never talked to you because you said you didn't want to be talked to, <laughs> but did everything go OK? Nope. <laughs> Thank you. Can we get these lights for our house? So we'll keep yeah. <laughs> Mike, I have to figure out what I did wrong. <laughs> Mike and Janet Honig and their daughter Gianna, you were wonderful. Founders of Be Like Jake. Jersey Matters continues right after this. Still to come on Jersey Matters, they say politics is ugly, but it's not supposed to be this ugly. We'll explain when Jersey Matters continues.